In a world racing toward the future, China has quietly taken another staggering leap. The country has just surpassed 50,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, an achievement that rewrites what's possible in national infrastructure and urban connectivity. It's not just a number, it's a symbol of scale, speed, and ambition unmatched anywhere else on Earth. To grasp how monumental this is, consider this. 50,000 kilometers of track is enough to wrap around the planet one and a quarter times. No other country even comes close. This isn't something built over the course of a century. It's something China accomplished in just over 15 years. While some nations still debate whether high-speed rail is even worth pursuing, China went ahead and built more of it than the rest of the world combined. High-speed rail isn't a fringe luxury in China. It's a structural pillar. It's how the nation moves people, products, and power. And as the rest of the world hesitates, China accelerates. The Breakthrough Year The story starts in 2008. That year, while the world was watching the spectacle of the Beijing Olympics, China quietly launched its first high-speed rail line, the Beijing Tianjin Intercity Railway. At just 117 kilometers, it wasn't massive, but it was capable of reaching speeds of 350 kilometers per hour. More importantly, it worked. It was a proof of concept, a public statement, and a test run all in one. At the time, Japan's Shinkansen and France's TGV were widely recognized as the crown jewels of high-speed rail. China was seen as the newcomer, learning and borrowing from the established masters. But what followed was nothing short of revolutionary. By 2013, China had built over 10,000 kilometers of high-speed rail. That number tripled in just a few more years, and by 2025, the country crossed the 50,000-kilometer mark, a scale no one anticipated even inside China. It's not just growth. It's a transformation that has reshaped everything from migration patterns to morning commutes. What makes this growth even more astonishing is how coordinated it is. China didn't just lay tracks from city to city at random. It followed a meticulously planned design, the eight vertical and eight horizontal grid. This network connects major cities and regions with both trunk and branch lines, forming a high-speed lattice over one of the largest and most diverse nations on Earth. The result? A seamless electrified supergrid of transport. Trains now glide from Beijing to Shanghai in under four hours. A trip from Chengdu to Xi'an takes three. Even the once exhausting journey from Kunming to Guangzhou, formerly a day-long ordeal has been cut down to six smooth, scenic hours. The phrase, one-hour economic circle, used to sound like economic jargon. Now it's real life. These connections aren't just technical, they're cultural, they're emotional. They've changed how people think about time, distance, and opportunity. In a country with 1.4 billion people and vast geographic variants. These rail lines have made the nation feel smaller, faster, and more unified. Everyday Lives Transformed This transformation goes beyond travel time. It has fundamentally altered daily life for tens of millions of Chinese citizens. A factory owner in Yiwu can travel to Shanghai, close a business deal, and return home before nightfall. A student in Wuhan can hop on a train to visit family in Nanjing every weekend. Teachers, doctors, engineers, and small business owners can now commute hundreds of kilometers in the time it used to take just to cross a city. Even towns once dismissed as too remote are now viable hubs of activity. Smaller stations along major lines have become lifelines for rural areas, bringing in investment, boosting tourism, and allowing industries to relocate without losing access to big city markets. Regional airports may be closing, but high-speed rail stations are being built. More than anything, this network has helped rebalance China's population. Workers no longer need to relocate permanently to overcrowded coastal megacities. They can stay in their hometowns and commute. This means less pressure on housing, less strain on city infrastructure, and more balanced national development. And for businesses, it means supply chains that move as fast as decisions. Engineering on an epic scale. Behind all of this is an engineering story that's just as astonishing. Laying over 50,000 kilometers of high-speed rail 
requires more than political will. It demands next-level logistics and world-class innovation. China's construction crews have been known to lay up to 30 kilometers of track in a single day. They've built over some of the world's highest mountains, tunneled through frozen ground, and erected bridges over valleys that stretch for kilometers. They've built stations in the heart of deserts, stabilized track on permafrost, and perfected modular systems that make deployment faster and cheaper. These aren't just feats of manpower, they're marvels of planning and machinery. The trains themselves are no less impressive. While early Chinese trains leaned on German and Japanese designs, today's Fuxing series is entirely homegrown. Designed, built, and maintained in China, these trains operate at commercial speeds of 350 km per hour, with test models pushing beyond 400. They use lighter materials, smart braking systems, and AI-powered diagnostics to stay safe, stable, and efficient. Many of them even feature onboard Wi-Fi, panoramic windows and quiet zones, proof that speed and comfort don't have to be mutually exclusive. The Price of Progress Of course, none of this came without cost. Building high-speed rail is expensive. Depending on terrain and urban density, construction can range from $20 million to over $100 million per kilometer. Critics have pointed to stations built in lightly populated regions, labeling them ghost stations and questioned whether some lines will ever break even. There are also concerns about national debt, ongoing maintenance costs, and the financial sustainability of expanding the network further. But China's vision isn't about immediate return on investment, it's about national transformation. Just like highways reshaped the United States in the 20th century, China sees rail as its 21st century backbone. And there are savings too, less reliance on domestic flights, fewer traffic jams, lower carbon emissions, and stronger regional economies. Even in the short term, some of these lines are already proving profitable, especially on high-density routes between megacities. And China's ambitions don't stop within its own borders. The country is actively exporting its railway expertise through the Belt and Road Initiative. From the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail in Indonesia to ongoing discussions in Thailand, Laos, Egypt, and Eastern Europe, Chinese trains and engineers are laying track across continents. This isn't just about infrastructure, it's soft power on rails. Every international deal builds influence. Every kilometer abroad creates new trade routes, new alliances, and new access points for Chinese companies. In a world where tech and territory are battlegrounds, rail has become one of China's sharpest geopolitical tools. So what comes next? China aims to expand its high-speed rail network to 60,000 kilometers by 2030, linking nearly every Chinese city with a population above 500,000. The goal? No citizen should be more than a few hours from a major economic zone. New lines are pushing technological boundaries. Autonomous train systems, predictive maintenance powered by AI, and fully electrified zero-emission corridors are being rolled out. Lines between Chengdu and Chongqing are already testing sustained speeds over 400 km per hour. But perhaps most exciting is what's happening in the labs. The dream of vacuum tube maglev trains potentially reaching speeds of 1,000 km per hour. These aren't wild experiments. They're prototypes being tested. If successful, they could turn an 8-hour journey into a 45-minute glide. It's no longer a question of whether China will build it. It's a matter of when. Meanwhile, the rest of the world is watching, sometimes in admiration, sometimes in disbelief. The United States still has no commercial high-speed rail. Europe's once pioneering systems have stagnated. Even Japan's Shinkansen, for all its legacy, has expanded cautiously over the past decade. What sets China apart isn't just budget, it's momentum. It doesn't stop to second guess. It builds, tests, iterates, and keeps moving forward. While other nations conduct feasibility studies, China breaks ground. While others debate policy, China opens stations. So, what does it really mean when China hits 50,000 kilometers of high-speed rail? It means the country didn't just join the modern era of transport. It built the highway through it. It means travel is no longer a barrier. It's a bridge. It means the future moves on rails and China is driving the train. 
High-speed rail in China is not just a system, it's a statement. A declaration of how the future moves, fast, connected, electrified. In China today, having breakfast in Beijing, lunch in Shanghai, and dinner in Guangzhou isn't an aspirational slogan. It's a perfectly normal Tuesday. While the rest of the world debates, rethinks, and reschedules, China is already boarding its next train.